Hey guys, welcome back to another Underground Virtual Source video. My name is Paul. I'm a violin viola teacher located in San Diego, California. So today we're going to be talking about arm weight versus finger pressure. Um, specifically, um, when to use which one and also uh, a couple exercises to help you to get started on arm weight and finger pressure. Um, so knowing these two things will definitely change how you per, uh, kind of perceive dynamics. Um, technically speaking, um, you will understand how to make crescendos from frog to tip, tip to frog, knowing when to apply weight versus pressure. And also if you're trying to create a big sound from frog to tip, um, a lot of times students lose sound when they get near the tip. And so understanding how to apply um, weight versus pressure is going to change that for you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bow here and I'm going to divide it into four sections for you. And I'm going to explain in each section uh, how much of weight versus pressure to use. Okay, and so when we talk about arm weight, we're talking about arm weight. So you, if you don't know what that feels like, take your left hand, put it under your right arm and completely relax your right arm and only hold it with your left hand and you should feel this um, weight, this heaviness in your in your arm. And that's what you need to apply in here. Now, pressure is, I'm talking about is the index finger pressure here, okay? So, in the first section, so one, two, three, four. So in the first section near the frog area, you're only going to be applying arm weight. There's no finger pressure necessary because when you place your bow in the playing position at the frog, your hand is over the instrument in this area and your arm is in this close position. So all of your weight is centered in this area and it's very easy to then apply arm weight to create a big sound for us. We don't need to apply pressure. What happens is if you apply arm weight and pressure, then you start to get too much. You start to get a scratchy sound. So arm weight is very important to, to get used to in the frog area. Moving on to the second section. In the second section, your arm weight is still going to be there, but index finger is going to kick in a little bit now because now you really, really need to um, try to start to maintain the same type of tone that you created in the frog area. So if I play a forte here and I'm going to move to the second section now, I need to create a forte still. I will have to apply a little bit index finger pressure in order to still have that forte sound otherwise it's going to start getting softer and softer and softer as we get to the tip okay so still some arm weight but a little bit of pressure kicking in moving on to third section definitely going to need more index finger pressure arm weight is almost disappeared but uh, definitely a little bit more index finger pressure okay last but not least near the tip area pressure only only index finger pressure there's no arm weight arm is fully extended therefore it's no longer centered in this area that you can comfortably apply on so only pressure once again arm weight arm weight plus a little pressure pressure a little bit of arm weight left and pressure now here's an idea for you to think about while we do the exercises okay so at the frog i want you to think about index uh, sorry not index finger i want you to think about pinky to be the um, the one that is adding the weight. Okay, so at the frog, think about pinky adding the weight. Near the second section, think about ring finger adding the weight. Near the third section, think about middle finger adding the weight. And near the fourth section, think about index finger adding the pressure. Okay, so pinky, ring finger, middle finger, index finger. Now, the first exercise that I'm going to uh, give you is. Um, straight eighth notes and you're going to go um, eighth notes work around the frog area eighth notes work on around um, the second section eighth notes work around the third and then last but not least near the tip um, and all eighth notes and we're just going to keep going non-stop okay so it's going to be around four notes per section and the dynamic we're aiming for is forte here we go Okay, 
so as you heard, I worked my way up from frog to tip, and you heard the same volume coming out from frog all the way to tip. And so that's the first exercise. You can also go back from tip to frog. Um, but the same idea, think about the different sections and the different fingers applying the weight and the pressure for you. Now, the reason we think about these fingers is just to kind of evenly distribute um, it out for you. So it's not like going from weight and then completely, uh, you know, a lot of pressure or something, but knowing how to increase that. And just the idea of each, each finger here, because there's four fingers as well, it would help you distribute a little bit more evenly. That's just a little perspective. But in realistically speaking, it's uh, weight at the at the frog, um, lower half, and then pressure near the tip. Okay, now the second exercise is not too different, but we're just gonna be playing one straight long note from frog to tip and tip to frog, just long note. And what we're gonna do is think about the same thing, pinky, ring finger, middle finger, index finger, trying to maintain a, uh, a big um, forte dynamic. Here we go. Okay, so as you heard, you probably heard the sound that was very, very sustained and the dynamic was fairly close no matter which uh, section of the bow I was in. And that's your goal, is to be able to maintain the same sound, the same kind of dynamic, no matter if you're at the frog or at the tip or anywhere in the middle. Okay, so those are the two exercises to get you started. And once you apply into your own music, you can definitely start to think about um, you know uh, the arm weight versus finger pressure if you're playing super long notes and you're just going back and forth on these long notes in your own music then think a little bit about the pinky ring finger middle finger index finger that idea will definitely help you to have a more um, stable uh, dynamic all the way through all right so that's it for this video um, if you liked it please give it a thumbs up uh, if you have any questions drop it down in the comments below or just any ideas, general things that you notice when you practice. Um, and last but not least, uh, please hit the subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.